Robert Henri is considered by many to be the greatest art teacher of all time. I mean, he taught George Bellows, Edward Hopper, Arthur Dove, and Arshile Gorky. He had working ideas on a great many topics, but today I'm focusing on his thoughts about remaking, refining your art. Now, sure, I'm likely taking this next quote out of context, but it works. He said this, be always looking for the thing you like and not afraid of overstating it. These words have so much to teach us about developing an art style, making better art, and most importantly, a surefire way to remake our less than winning art and fast. In the part of my world that collides with Robert Henri's ideas, there are three ways to improve on a less than stellar painting attempt. Number one, you gotta face the ugly. Number two, you gotta harness the good. And number three, you gotta remake it fast. I recently did this painting during a live. Some of you might have been there. I'm gonna link it below if you wanna check it out. It was a good, fun two hours. Anywho, I made some decisions live in the moment while I was distracted that led to a painting result I wasn't too thrilled about. The rose here in the upper left corner, I started with a high staining red color and it really limited what I could do. Definitely that was my ugly and I'm gonna change that. I loved these two little ranunculus-like roses down here, so I'm gonna keep those. Now, when you're evaluating your own art that you're looking to remake for the better, you might wanna even take notes. Next up, the good thing that I really loved here was this little spray of stock. I liked the colors I chose, the creamy pink, and then I added that yellowy green at the base of each one, and I like the effect. I'm gonna take that spray of stock and definitely repeat it in my new painting. I had another sprig of stock here in the upper right hand side of the painting that I used a more opaque pink. I had mixed my pink from the palette with some bleed proof white and I just don't like the, the heaviness, the chalkiness of it. So I won't be doing that again. I'm not going to be repeating that ugly, that's for sure. So what's important here, friends, is to take a few moments, like literally a minute, evaluate your wah wah painting and decide how you're going to attack the next painting. But what's really important here perhaps what is the most important step is number three you need to remake it you need to take all this information that you spent a minute like literally no more than a minute friends don't get stuck here and you need to remake the art fast carve out a few minutes and just do it don't continue planning don't take days to evaluate don't sketch it before you do it just get in and get it done for the second time and before you know it you're gonna be a lot happier all right, let's get into it. Here is my retry, my redo. I am thinking about all the notes that I took. Mine were more mental than written, but whatever. I'm starting out this rose up here and I've decided I want this rose to be bigger. I want it to be a focal point. And friends, this is a really important point. All of your ideas, all of the ugly that you've identified, the good that you've recognized from painting number one, you can also elaborate and decide you wanna even do more and refine even further than that. So for me, making this rose bigger is actually a really important way to improve the composition overall. So I'm also remembering not to go in with that high staining red. I'm actually staying away from that red for this one until the very end when I start to add detail because that red really tripped me up on the first try of this. Now adding in those two little ranunculus that I absolutely loved the first time around and reminding myself to stay away from the full saturation of that red. Remember that sprig of stock that I love so much in the original painting, it was kind of in the bottom left corner of the composition. I'm keeping it there, but I'm also deciding to go ahead and add it in a few more spots again to boost my composition. Now you might notice I'm omitting things. In my painting number one, I had yellow yarrow and I really didn't feel like it was doing anything for the composition, so I've omitted it. Let's remember what our art teacher, Robert Henri, said. Don't be afraid to identify the things you love and kind of embellish them and make them even better and amplify them. 
So I'm always remembering that. I'm not here on this earth. I'm not the type of artist to just replicate what I see. There are plenty of folks who do that and oh my gosh, they do it well. I am here to amplify what I see. And so I love how Mr. Henri reminds us of that. It's such an important step in your art journey. I also loved these oval shapes that I added in painting number one. They really started to look a lot more like kumquats than anything else. They were originally put down as like pods of some sort that I was just making up, but they really look like kumquats. So I'm including them here. I definitely added a little bit more of lifting technique to them to kind of get some highs and lows, shadows and highlights, but yeah, they had to stay. Now I mentioned it a few times because using that high staining red early in my first painting really is what put the whole painting off track. And so I was a little bit gun shy to actually use it at all in the second painting, but I realized that was kind of silly. So I took that red, mixed it with a little bit of the pink on this palette. And friends, by the way, this is the Art for Joy's Sake palette, my new palette. If you're interested or curious and want to know more, check the link below. So now that I'm onto the detail phase, I'm feeling more confident. I'm using the tip of my dagger brush and getting in there with some bold, but still lyrical and soft, wispy linear details. And it is working. I am thrilled. I am thrilled that I recognized the need to really hold off on using this red towards the end of the painting. It's really paying off. Another detail that I love from painting number one, the good that I'm trying to recognize are the green fillers. I love the green leaves that I added in, the press drag and lift classic leaves. And if you don't know what I mean by press drag and lift, check the link below. I'm going to show you all that I love about leaves and painting them. And I also loved this greenery, this kind of like pine needle filler that I added with my three quarter inch wash brush. Super fun, definitely a keeper. One thing that I noticed as I was painting on this composition, number two, kind of the correction painting. And it's not something I really honed in on when I was evaluating painting number one is my use of pink. I used a lot of the bright pink in painting number one and I wasn't unhappy about it. So towards the end, when I realized everything was very peachy, creamy with greens as an accent, I realized my soul was kind of missing that pink. So I brought it in and I'm so glad I did. Now let's talk about what you do when you've done painting number two and you're still not totally thoroughly convinced and in love and maybe it's still a failure. Maybe you still feel like, I don't know what to do with this. I can't recover this because let's be honest friends, that happens, but there is a solution. Watch this video next and you will be good to go. Happy painting friends.